A new frontier of exploration and exploitation is being considered in the vast, uncharted depths of our ocean. Deep sea mining, the extraction of valuable minerals and metals from the ocean floor, is a proposition that has stirred a maelstrom of controversy. But recently, the topic has been gaining significant traction as attempts to initiate this type of mining have finally begun. The allure of this endeavour lies in polymetallic nodules. I wrote an article about it on my website, and you can find a link to that in the description. They're essentially accumulated clusters of minerals rich in manganese, nickel, copper, cobalt, and trace amounts of rare earth elements and lithium. While not rare, these nodules are highly concentrated, making them a tantalising prospect for industries hungry for these resources. This topic is slowly gaining more heat, and for a good reason, and that reason is that it's a bad idea. But why is that the case? Well, I'll delve into that and touch on the claims spewed by many of the clueless that we are supposedly running out of minerals on land. Which is complete nonsense. Deep sea mining really boils down to whether or not the bounty is worth the risk. The deep sea is one of the most fragile ecosystems on our planet, and is also one of the least explored. The proposed technique for deep sea mining to collect polymetallic nodules is akin to literally vacuuming up the sea floor. This process would undoubtedly devastate any organic life it encounters. It'd collect the nodules while churning out everything else in the process, and this seems ideal from a mining perspective, but the issue is that the ocean floor is not some barren wasteland, it's a complex ecosystem teeming with a rich microbiome. A microbiome, you say? Well, yes, everything has a microbiome. Your gut, your mouth, your skin, the soil in your garden, the mud in a pond, the scales of a fish, everything. And it may seem insignificant, but I must stress it's one of the most important things to the health and sustainability of the evolution of any living organism, plant, human, or fungus alike. It can make or break a species. This all may seem minute, and it may be on the surface, but when you exist several kilometres beneath the salty waves of the ocean in an environment that sees little to no change throughout the eons, these unique organisms that make up the deep sea microbiome have evolved specifically for this purpose. They play a valuable role in many things, but one of the most important is their role in nutrient uptake, feeding the ecosystem in the process. This might surprise you, but before geology I started my pathway here by nerding out on botany, biology and mycology. I'm a major green thumb even to this day and I still have a love for those topics. But the reason I mention that is because at the start of my journey I learnt about the soil microbiome and how I decimated it every single time I plunged my shovel into the ground and turned over the soil. And this is relevant because just as the soil in the garden is home to a myriad of beneficial bacteria and fungi that support plant life, the ocean floor hosts its own microscopic communities. These communities are integral to the health of the oceanic ecosystem, and disturbing them could have far-reaching consequences. Now, there are those humans who cannot feel compassion or empathy, and whose ears only perk up if there's something in it for them. So this part of the script is for you guys. There's undiscovered medical potential here. Organisms that evolved unique characteristics due to spending their existence on the deep sea floor could be highly beneficial for humans. Who knows what lurks out there, from cures to diseases to potential antibiotic replacements. The deep sea is a unique and extreme environment characterised by high pressures, low temperatures and complete darkness beyond the reach of sunlight. It's also where changes can occur very slowly due to the lack of light and extreme pressure. And we're just gonna go in there and vacuum it all up? Come on guys, this is akin to the deforestation of the Amazon. So many species of plants and animals going extinct, many of which we've never even seen, let alone studied, and any potential medical benefits dying alongside with them, along with the scarification of the most beautiful rainforest on our planet. The deep sea is the last bastion of genuinely unexplored terrain. We stand on the precipice of sending a fleet of glorified vacuum cleaners to disrupt this delicate balance for the sake of some metal balls when there are many clear and far more accessible alternatives on land where there exists a multitude of untapped deposits of manganese and other minerals just waiting to be mined. The argument that we are running out of minerals on land is a fallacy. Significant gold deposits are discovered every decade, and as our understanding of geology and geophysical techniques evolve, we are becoming increasingly adept at locating these resources. In Australia, we just found a volcanic arc in Western Victoria that could be as rich in copper as the deposits that are found in the Andes. And 20 years ago, we had no idea it was even there. Deep sea mining is a proposition that, on the surface, is a solution to our insatiable demand for minerals. But when we delve deeper, we find it is a reckless gamble. This risk could result in the devastation of an ecosystem we barely understand. 
And the amount of sediment kicked up by this type of operation will be a death sentence for many marine organisms here. The pursuit of minerals and the preservation of the environment need not be mutually exclusive. It is possible for mining and for environmentalism to coexist, but this requires careful consideration and respect for the ecosystems we are exploiting. The deep sea is a world we are only beginning to understand. Let's not destroy it before we've had a chance to explore it, because this is not only short-sighted, it's a potentially catastrophic solution to a problem with other less destructive answers. It's a testament to the rashness of human nature and a stark reminder of a need for careful stewardship of our planet. As many of you know, I'm an avid miner. I love it, I live for it. But as my closer friends know, I also care a lot about the environment, and I have a deep reverence and love for it and the animals within it. I believe in taking our time to reason and weighing the pros and cons. If one actually does this, then it's a no-brainer. Deep sea mining is a foolish idea at this stage. More research needs to be done, and more work needs to be done to explore ecosystems where this endeavour is proposed to identify what organisms exist before even considering sending in the vacuums. Although the reason this endeavour is being undertaken to begin with is due to the ease of harvest, they're willing to ignore the risks because, if approved, the money they will make off this will be sickening to most to realise, especially because the devices that are mining these nodules are automated, meaning less wages to be paid. But ultimately, greed is driving this, and we are responsible for shutting it down. Don't believe the lies, and remain opposed to this if you feel that it is right. If you share a different viewpoint, that is totally fine too. Still, I remain steadfast in my opinion that this is a stupid and rash idea, driven by narcissistic, careless individuals putting numbers in a bank account above life, evolution, potential medical cures, and more. All for some minerals we can just mine on the surface. Cobalt included. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is deep sea mining a good idea? If so, why? If not, why? We have the knowledge, the technology, and the resources to mine responsibly on the surface. Let's use them wisely and leave the deep sea to its mysteries, for now at least. There is a better time to start this endeavour. More time and research are needed, and technology needs to progress a little more to allow us to do that. As we saw in the recent events that unfolded near the Titanic, the deep sea is challenging. But in my opinion, we must study it fully before this endeavour is allowed to be carried out. Thanks for watching.